Hey, how's it going everybody? And welcome back to the third edition of the Insanely Easy Investing Strategy. And this edition we are going to be looking at the 2000s when using our RSI investing strategy. So, just going off the back, uh, the previous videos, what we're looking for is the RSI to go oversold on the weekly, meaning that it drops below the 30 level. And then simply we just buy once it goes out of this oversold level. So as you can see, we get into the year 2000, um, no oversold levels, but then once we get into 2001, we start to get our first oversold. And then all we're gonna do is simply place our vertical line on the week where it leaves. And then we're gonna look at the six month return, the one year return, the five year return, and the 10 year return. So over here, April of 01, so that's 04-01, and then let's go look at the six month return. So 09 gets us to 10. So that's negative seven. Let's look at the one year return. So let's call it negative four. Look at the five year return. percent and then finally the 10 year return so this will be 2011 and we'll call that 13 percent already then moving on So we get our next oversold uh, coming into September of 01, and then we leave again at the end of September. So let's look at our six month return. So that's 9, 3, 3, March. Uh, that's 11%. And looking at our one year return. And as many of you know, the early 2000s were definitely tough for many investors. This was, you know, kind of the start of the big sell off of the tech bubble. Um, we saw a lot of fraud cases between Enron and WorldCom. So that's where we get this big, huge sell-off coming out of the 2000s all the way down to, you know, the middle of, of 2002. We see a pretty hefty bear market. So now let's look at our, our five-year return. So that's September of 06. Call that 29%. And then finally our 10-year return going to be September of 2011. And that's 15%. Okay. So moving on to the next one. Then we start to see a bottom kind of forming here in the middle of 2002. So we get out of that oversold in August of 2002. So that's 8 plus 4 is December, plus 2 is February. Right, so we'll call that negative 6%. This is August of 2002. 
Alright, then let's look at our one year return. So as you can see, you know, we do kind of get some false readings here, and those are pretty evident with this 2001 level. Um, but the more times that we hit this, the better chance that we are going to have of actually catching that bottom. So while the strategy is not infallible, um, if you do have a longer term horizon and you do have available capital to keep adding on each of these oversolds and coming out of oversolds, you will see a much greater result on your capital invested. So our one year return, we'll call that 8%. Uh, five year return, we're going to go to 2007 of August. The first week of August, and that is a, that's a very good one. That's sixty-five percent. We'll call that. And then finally, our ten-year return is two thousand twelve August, and we'll call that fifty-four percent. So then. If if you've been looking ahead, you can see our next oversold is going to catch the exact bottom of this bear market, so that's great for us. Um, we're going to show a great return on this one. So that's October of 2002, and let's find the six-month return. So plus two is 12, plus four is four, so that's April. That's going to be 7%. Let's find our one-year return. So go October of 2003. 24%. Yep, that's another good one. Uh, let's look at the five-year return. So that's going to be October of 2017. Kind of right around the top of the next bull market. Yeah, we catch the exact top right there, so that's 87%. And then finally, let's look at the 10-year return, so October 2012. So I'm going to get a 73%. So as you can see, those last two 10-year returns are much greater than our previous two, just because we did get a little bit early in our, you know, kind of trying to buy the bottom. But in the grand scheme of things, we did lower our, our dollar cost average on those. And we are seeing some better returns here that are more in line with kind of the market's uh, typical return right around 9%. And this is pretty evident within that five-year return average that we are seeing so far. So let's hop to the next one. So market does very well. We do catch the exact bottom here. And then for the next, we'll call it five years, six years, we get a nice bull market until we get the 2008 financial crisis. And that's where we're going to see a lot more of these um, RSI oversolds again. So coming out October again, so October 27th of 08, that week of. So we're going to look at our six-month return. So that's going to get us to 2 December, and then 4 is April. So this one, we'll call that negative 10, and that's October of 08. And looking at the one year, October of 9, that one we'll call it 11, five year, October of 13, Eighty percent, and then finally the ten year is going to be October of eighteen. So that's when we're going to get a very big move. Uh, almost, the, almost the pico top here. One hundred eighty percent. That's what we're looking for there, folks. So that was a very good one. Um, two left, so we almost bought the bottom there. But we did see 
another one kind of drop out here and come in in November of 08. So let's look at the six months. So that's going to get us to May. That one, we'll call it 3%. 2008, 3%. Then we're going to look at the one year return. November of 09. Call that 24%. And then the five year is going to be November of 13. That's call it 102. And then finally, the 10 year is going to be November of 18. So, what do we have? We'll call that 208. So, another great return, really bringing the averages up. And then finally, we did get one more oversold, marking the absolute bottom. So this was a great buy right here. Um, we literally bought the week after the market bottomed. So we're going to get some even better returns on this one. So that was the absolute bottom of March of 2009. So that's 3 plus 6 is 9. So that gets us to September of 2009 for our six-month return. And that's, that's huge right there for a six-month return. That's 38%. 3-2009, 38%. Then going to our one year return. So that's March of 10, 52%, wonderful one year return. And then let's look at our five year return. So that's gonna be March of 14. hundred and forty eight percent and then finally we're gonna go to March of twenty nineteen. This will probably be a massive one. And it is two hundred and seventy three percent. So kind of looking over this data, let's kind of interpret it a little bit, see what everything is telling us. So our six month return right around 5%, which if that's annualized, we'll take it times two, and that gets us right around our 10%, which is more or less the average of the S&P 500 um, average annual return. Uh, looking at our one year return, so that's 14%. So that's about 5% better than the, or 5%, five basis points better than the you know, the average annualized return, looking at our five-year return. Um, if we turn that 10%, took a time spot, that'd be around, right around 50. So we're doing, you know, right around 50% better than the average. And then looking at the 10-year return, this would kind of annualize to around 11.7%, um, which is still much better than the S&P's average gain of around 9%. And as you can see, once we got out of this kind of big bear market, you know, that that decade of the early 2000s is known as the lost decade because you didn't really see any great returns until that 2012 level, um, just because it took the market very a very long time to get past those 2000s um, peaks that were set. So kind of going through here, we did have some pretty great returns and we'll take a look at 2010s and 2020s in the next video. Thanks for watching.